So this is a quick look at the new batch processing feature in Smart Parcel. Um, in order to do this uh, demonstration, uh, I've created a batch of about 200 orders. And uh, you'll see that this mechanism is very, very similar to uh, what you might be familiar with um, if you've used if you use Smart Parcel in the past. So uh, I've selected the orders and I go into Smart Parcel. Uh, what we have now through Ship Engine is actually a, a true batch processing mechanism. Uh, so this new mechanism really is targeted towards um, high volume uh, processing. Uh, you can see with uh, high volume processing enabled, you have this option here, uh, which I've configured to be selected by default. Um, and that option is available in your Smart Parcel settings and can be, and can be configured by customer. Um, so with that selected, if I go, um, one other thing I can do uh, is I can actually specify a batch name, um, and this is just an, a, an identifier that will help you locate that batch uh, later on. So I'll just do, uh, let's see, let's see the second batch for Smart Parcel, and then if I go in and do a print, at this point what's happening is uh, the WMS, 3PL Warehouse Manager, is um, compiling and gathering all of the data that it needs to send uh, to Ship Engine so that the batches uh, can actually be uh, generated. And that might take a that might take a little bit of time here because there are 200 labels in this batch. There we go. So now, when you see this change, uh, you can see generate shipping label generating shipping labels. Feel free to navigate away. That means that the data has been sent to Ship Engine, uh, and we can actually get out of Smart Parcel at this point if we want. Um, the key other UI that you'll want to be familiar with for high volume processing is this new option here, uh, which is available when uh, high volume processing is enabled, um, is the print high volume batches modal. Um, this is new UI. It shows you a list of all of your batches uh, that you've processed um, and uh, or are in the or, or in currently processing. Uh, so that you just kind of see status, and this is the page from which you'll actually print labels. So you can see I've got uh, this uh, this new batch right here. It looks like three of those had already been shipped, um, or I'd already had some work done on them, so they weren't included. Um, and you saw that message when I initially went into Smart Parcel. Um, and we currently have. Let me just kind of walk you through this uh, dialogue. Um, at the top, you have the ability uh, the ability to filter um, on a variety of uh, uh, batch characteristics. By default, uh, we, we do not filter customer or warehouse or status, but we do set uh, a default sort to today, so batches that were created today, although you can go back and, and look um, for a broader range if you want, or set a custom time, uh, time frame if that's, if that's what you need. Uh, and depending on how many batches you're processing in a day, you might, might even shrink it down to a portion of the day. Um, just depending on what your needs are. So uh, there you go. You can see, uh, so this batch is still processing. This is a static modal, so it doesn't update on its own yet. Um, however, if, you can, you can, if you're going to cancel and then come back in, it'll update, or you can click the refresh button to update the batch there, and you can see that uh, we're now complete, and 197 batches completed, um, a total of 197 in the batch, and then uh, these two numbers here in the in the parentheses um, are 197 successfully printed uh, and zero zero had errors. Um, if I go back to uh, last seven days, you can see I've got one one uh, batch down here that actually had an error associated with it. And if you click in the status column, you can actually jump over to a description of that error and the transaction ID, so you can kind of have a really good idea of, uh, of what happened and why uh, that, uh, that particular order generated an error. In this case, there was a, a problem uh, with the selected ship service um, for FedEx that wasn't allowed um, given, the, uh, uh, given the address information that was provided. So, so that way you can go back to that order, you can modify or update or fix the problem. Uh, and then just come back in and reprocess um, that order either individually or if you have a set of errors, uh, once you've solved them, you could reprocess them, process them as a batch. So um, a couple other things I'll, uh, I'll mention uh, relevant to the grid here that you're seeing. Um, these columns, 
uh, ship engine ID is um, an identifier that's not very meaningful to um, those of us who are creating batches, uh, but it's very useful if we run into any issues that we need to communicate to ship engine on. So we provide that uh, just as for visibility, um, for troubleshooting, and uh, and possibly for support. The batch name uh, that you specified when you created the batch is displayed here. Uh, and of course, you can sort and filter on any of these columns. Uh, we specify the or we display the customer and warehouse, uh, and the date the batch was uh, was processed, and then of course the totals and the status that I've already talked about. Um, as with other columns in uh, or, or other grids in uh, uh, 3PL Warehouse Manager, you have the ability to display or hide uh, columns as needed. Uh, you can also click and drag columns to reorder them uh, however you would like. So you've got all of that flexibility there. And these changes will be uh, kind of preserved and saved um, uh, as you uh, go back into uh, the modal um, after you've made those changes. So uh, in order to print batches, you simply select the batch that you want, select the format that you want to print in. I'll use PDF in this case, uh, since I don't have a ZPL printer hooked up right now. Uh, and you just go to print labels. What you'll see happens here is that uh, we generate a PDF and notice it's a single PDF document that has all of these labels in it. Um, so all 197 labels are in a single PDF which means you can send the single the single file to the printer um, for printing and uh, not having and you don't have to send 197 separate files to print all of these uh, labels. One thing I will note um, is because of the way that we do uh, that we that Ship Engine does batch processing and the fact that it is true batch processing. Well, once you've printed um, orders, uh, that's that's the point at which you will start to see updates to the small parcel and uh, the small, small parcel ship date and the tracking numbers. So if I refresh uh, this information, you'll see that I am uh, uh, that I'm starting to get that information. It looks like I've got almost all of it except for those three that, that uh, were excluded from the batch because they had already been they've already got some status that's preventing them from being processed. So these other 197 orders um, now have a tracking number and a small parcel ship date. Um, and you can go ahead and move forward with those uh, using your regular processes. So if I go into Smart Parcel, in the current Smart Parcel interface, um, when you're using high volume processing, these options here for the, the label format um, and this option here for uh, specifying a, a custom uh, label template, um, those are not applicable. And also uh, the include return label does not currently apply to uh, batch processing although we are looking to, uh, to, to extend uh, high volume processing to include the ability to auto print uh, return labels as well, um, but that's not available quite yet. So I just wanted to make that clear. The expectation is that you'll be able to print batches of hundreds of labels. Uh, you can see how fast that batch of 200 labels uh, was processed um, and uh, probably best at this point to, to stay more in, in the four to 500 uh, labels per batch, not orders per batch, but labels per batch. Uh, so if you have an order that has a whole bunch of packages, uh, you'll want to uh, kind of be aware of the number of labels per order uh, in order to calculate how, just how big uh, a batch you can create. Uh, I hope that's helpful and uh, thank you for watching.